Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, May 2nd, 2023. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday between 7 and 10 p.m. Pacific Time. This is episode 680 and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now, because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, you can turn on subtitles. I create them myself. In today's episode, she and her perfect husband apologizes for negligence. Someone from a crowd throws an item at Wang Yibo. Xiao Chan Studio urges order as the actor is about to begin his play again. And my final thoughts on Nothing But You with Liu Wu and Zhou Yutong. But first, here's what's recently premiered, one drama for today and yesterday. It's The Ingenious One, starring Chen Xiao and Rachel Mao. The costume drama premiered yesterday, May 1st. Chen Xiao plays Yun Xiang, a swordsman with a frivolous facade but who is in fact an ingenious strategist. He is in love with Shu Yanan, a superior martial artist played by Rachel Mao. She approaches him with an ulterior motive, but can she outwit the ingenious one? The drama is slated for 36 episodes and is available on iQIYI. And that's it for recently premiered dramas. Moving on, here's a look at what's in store for the month of May, according to Sina Entertainment. On April 27th, Sina Entertainment, as they usually do at the end of the month, published their drama forecast for the following month. In this case, it's May. According to their online brochure cover, May will see the likes of Del Raba, Victoria Song, Guo Qiling, and Zhao Lusi battle in the workplace. And Bai Lu, Chen Xiao, Xu Kai, and Zhu Jingyi put on costume dramas again. There are only 8 dramas in the brochure, but before we get to them, let's see how their forecast did last month. For April, they forecasted 11 dramas and got 6 correct, that's 55%. Among the titles they got right, Take Us Home, 13 Years of Dust, and Till the End of the Moon. 55% is passable but not great, let's see if they can do better this month. And just a suggestion, this part is probably best viewed with subtitles, as it's all titles and names. For this month, Sina forecasted Warm and Sweet with Victoria Song and Michelle Chen. This is confirmed to premiere on May 3rd. Prosecution Elite with Del Raba and Tong Dawei. This passed review recently, so perhaps an imminent premiere is in the cards. The Ordinary Road with Guo Qiling and Gina Jin. This is confirmed to premiere on May 3rd. Gen Z with Wu Kang and Zhao Lusi. This has been forecasted to premiere for a few months now, still hasn't happened. Story of Kunning Palace with Bai Lu and Zhang Linghe. This is rumored to premiere on May 20th. The Ingenious One with Chen Xiao and Rachel Mao. As mentioned earlier, it premiered today. Snow Eagle Lord with Xu Kai and Guli Naja. And lastly, A Date with the Future with William Chen and Zhang Ronan. Like Gen Z, this has also been forecasted to premiere for a few months now, still hasn't happened. Which ones are you looking forward to? Let us know in the comment section below. I'm gonna check out The Ingenious One and probably Prosecution Elite as well if it premieres. And just a note on A Date with the Future. The drama tells the love story between a firefighter played by William Chan and a journalist played by Chang Ronan. Originally, Xu Kai Cheng had a supporting role as a firefighter in the drama, but the actor was hit with the infidelity scandal with Chang Tianai. Additionally, Wang Tong, another supporting actor, was hit with his domestic abuse scandal. Reportedly, both actors have either been completely removed from the drama or had their faces digitally replaced by another actor. Their names and pictures have also been removed from the drama's official page. So effectively, both actors have been scrubbed from the drama, if you will, and the drama did pass review in January, so one does wonder why its premiere is being held up. Lastly, for drama updates, she and her perfect husband recently published an apology for negligence. In the statement, they said, Due to negligence, the words Jinwen Law Firm Recruitment Site appeared in the background of one of the scenes in the drama. The Jinwen Law Firm in the drama is not the Jinwen Law Firm in Shanghai. After being notified by Shanghai Jinwen Law Firm, we immediately verified the above content and deleted it. We hereby apologize to Shanghai Junwen Law Firm and promise to strictly review in the future to prevent such incidents from happening again. She and her perfect husband stars Yang Mi and Xu Kai and premiered in November last year. 
In it, Yang Mi is a lawyer who is required to be married to be employed by her firm. She turns to Xu Kai's character to solve her quagmire. And that's it for drama updates. Moving on, celebrity updates, and today we begin with Wang Yipo, who had stuff thrown at him recently. The 25-year-old star of the movie, Born to Fly, was in Wuhan a couple of days ago. He was masked up and carrying a backpack, trying to keep a low profile as he exited a building. As he stepped into his van, someone from the crowd threw an item at him. Netizens are speculating that it was a gift and not meant to actually cause harm to Wang Yipo. Whatever it is, if it was meant to hit him, it was a terrible shot. According to Sina Entertainment, while the action invoked laughter from some in the crowd that moment, many on social media condemned the action, calling it dangerous. Others asserted that real fans won't do such things. Wang Yipo's latest movie, Born to Fly, hit theaters on April 28th. Its opening Topan rating already came out, an average score of 7.0 from around 68,000 ratings. Next up, Chu Jingyi took to Weibo to share news of her injury. That's according to this recent Sina article titled, Chu Jingyi posts a photo of her knee injury and said, Xiao Yang still has a lot of work to do. According to the article, Chu Jingyi's post read, Indeed, the floor had too much wax, but Xiao Yang still has a lot of work to do. Fans urged her to take care and be careful. There was no mention of where or how she hurt herself. I'm guessing she slipped on a waxed floor. But hopefully she gets well soon, and hopefully it doesn't affect the filming of her latest drama. The 28-year-old actress is currently filming the costume drama In Blossom with Liu Xueyi. Also hurting herself recently was Cheng Xiao. According to Sina Entertainment, the 24-year-old star of Light of Love with Liu Luo got injured while dancing. Here she is getting treatment. She was reportedly recording for the variety show Great Dance Crew on April 29th. Cheng Xiao did take to Weibo to assure everyone that she was okay, saying, Minor injury, no need to worry. Everyone enjoy your holidays. Next up, Esther Yu and Fan Chengcheng were photographed at a Givenchy event in Shenzhen on April 27th. Here are the two stars by a clothing rack chatting it up. She was kind enough to give him a plug on his latest movie, Godspeed, which premiered on April 28th. Here are 27-year-old Esther Yu and 22-year-old Fan Chengcheng posing for a Givenchy. And here they are playing to the camera. Fans were charmed by the stars and urged them to collaborate on a project. Lastly, for celebrity updates, Xiao Chan will be starting up A Dream Like a Dream again soon. On April 29th, Sina published this article titled, Xiao Chan's A Dream Like a Dream to Begin, Studio Calls for Joint Efforts to Maintain Order. According to it, the stage play A Dream Like a Dream is about to open in Xi'an. The 31-year-old actor's studio shared this message on Weibo, calling on everyone who goes to watch the play to only bring their love for the stage, to put fresh flowers and love in their hearts, and to work together to maintain order. Xiao Chan wrapped filming Sunshine by My Side with Bye Bye He in February. He's got the highly anticipated The Longest Promise awaiting release. Still no word on that one. If I'm not mistaken, it hasn't passed review yet. Before we get to our last segment, just to say that this show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoy the content, do like and subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, consider giving this video a super thanks. It is the heart-shaped button with the dollar sign below this video. All funds support the show and keep it going. Or you can check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar more a month, you'll have access to perks like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. On that note, it's Tuesday today, so time for another segment of Where's Mark is At? The title of the segment doesn't refer to where I'm at physically, it refers to where I'm at in the dramas I'm following. I'm currently following one drama. I'm on episode 2 of The Long Season starring Fan Wei and Qing Hao, following it on Wii TV where it's available with English subs. Absolutely loving this drama at the moment. It's so funny and in a very subtle way too. The actors are terrific and the story is intriguing. 
The drama opened on Topan with an impressive score of 9.0. It aired its finale yesterday, and as of today, the score has climbed to 9.5 from around 162,000 ratings. Also, I recently finished watching Nothing But You, and without giving away any spoilers, here are my quick final thoughts on it. Nothing But You stars Leo Wu and Zhou Yitong. It premiered on March 27th and aired the last of its 38 episodes on April 8th. In the drama, Leo Wu is a badminton player turned tennis player who's always being used as a substitute. Zhou Yitong is an elite professional who's going through a bottleneck in her career. The two meet and form a relationship and take a tennis club to new heights. So I quite enjoyed this drama. It revolves around not just romance, but also individual development and the determination to pursue one's dreams. It also revolves around sports, one of them in particular, badminton, which is something I play on a regular basis. What I like is that the drama's central message highlights how love can inspire personal growth and how it can empower individuals with the courage to move forward and embark on new beginnings. I also thought the actors, both main and supporting, were terrific and showed great chemistry, something that is a necessity for any romance drama to work. Some parts dragged on and I did use the skip button at times, but despite that I was still able to enjoy the drama as a whole. In conclusion, I'd recommend it if you're looking for a mature, motivating, and well-written love story to munch on for a couple of weeks. As of today, it has an average score of 8.2 from around 100,000 ratings on Douban. If I had to rate it, would give it a 7.5. And that's been another segment of Where's Mark Is At. It also brings us to the end of this episode. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you guys Thursday. As always, stay safe, and I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers.